a native of Michigan, born on May 10, 1964, Rick Allen Rhodes, on September 13, 1991, one day after being paroled, Rhodes entered the home of and murdered two brothers while they slept. Rhodes also stole money from the victims. Rhodes had a long criminal history, including convictions for burglary and auto theft in Florida, Iowa and Texas, when he broke into Charles Allen's house in the Houston suburb of Pasadena. The home, located near where the siblings' parents lived, had just been custom-built for Charles Allen and he had invited his brother to temporarily live with him. The two brothers had recently gone through separate divorces. Charles Allen, who played the piano and had dreams of a musical career, worked as a chemical operator at a local refinery. Bradley Allen worked as a freelance artist. At trial, prosecutors told jurors the siblings were asleep when Rhodes broke into their home in the early morning hours and attacked Charles Allen as he was in his bed. Bradley Allen was killed when he came to his brother's defense. An arrest in the case wasn't made until about a month later when Rhodes was caught burglarizing in elementary school. While in custody, Rhodes confessed to killing the brothers. But he claimed it was done in self-defense after exchanging words with Charles Allen as Rhodes took a walk at 2.30 a.m. I was tired of running. I wanted to tell what happened. Rhodes said in his confession. After he was released from prison in 1991, Rhodes told police he took a bus to Houston and began drinking while wandering around his old neighborhood into the early morning, eventually. Rhodes and Charles Allen got into an argument outside the Allen's house in Pasadena, and Rhodes followed Allen inside because he thought Allen was getting a gun. Rhodes beat Allen with a metal bar and stabbed him with a knife Allen had grabbed during the attack. Bradley Allen came out and began to hit Rhodes, who stabbed the brother. Prosecutors said Rhodes took clean clothing and cash when he left the house. Rhodes told police he found out the brothers died from the news later that day. When he was spotted during a school burglary weeks later, Rhodes said he was tired of running and was bothered by the murders. Shortly after he was sentenced to death in 1992, Rhodes, who is white, began arguing in appeals that Harris County prosecutors eliminated potential jurors from his trial because they were black. His attorneys argued the county had a history of trying to exclude black people from jury trials. When choosing jurors for trials, defense attorneys and prosecutors are able to remove a limited number of people from the potential juror pool without giving a reason. As long as the reason is not because of the person's race. In the courtroom and in their appeals, Rhodes attorneys challenged two strikes as race-related, arguing that prosecutors probed the responses of two black jurors more thoroughly than the white people on jury panels, as if looking for reasons to reject them. By 2019, state and federal courts of all levels had rejected Rhodes' challenges, ultimately finding that prosecutors had reasonable grounds unrelated to race for striking the two black people. From the jury pool, of their 14 strikes allowed without giving reason, the prosecutors had also struck 12 white people. Rhodes' jury ultimately was made up of 10 white jurors, one Hispanic juror and one whose race was not clear from court records. This year, Rhodes' attorneys again sought missing information on the potential jurors. They argued that more information, like the racial breakdown of the entire jury pool, has not been disclosed, 
keeping Rhodes from presenting arguments that his trial was corrupted by racial bias. He has been prevented from developing and raising his claim because the state has denied him access to the materials provided for by state law. Materials which are necessary to conduct the comparative juror analysis, his attorneys wrote in a district court filing in July this year. The Harris County District Attorney's Office told Rhodes attorneys that there are more records on the jury pool available, but the trial court must order the release of the records. The trial court judge said she had no jurisdiction and wouldn't rule on the matter, the court said, prompting Rhodes' last appeals to state and federal courts. It is clear and indeed the district attorney has not disputed that. Under state law, the motion council filed was precisely the correct vehicle by which to ask for access to the juror information. His attorneys argued in a filing. In a 5-4 to four ruling, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals in July declined to order the trial court judge to rule on the matter. Though dissenting judges said the judge's refusal was inconsistent with court precedent and suggested the court should have asked the judge why she didn't think she had jurisdiction. The federal courts all rejected Rhodes' motions as well, ending with the nation's highest court. The Texas Attorney General's office argued in a filing this month that the courts have no justification to stop an execution after Rhodes' attorneys failed to seek this information for decades. Josh Rice, who leads the Harris County District Attorney's Post-Conviction Writs Division, said it was time. Thirty years after his crime, Rick Allen Rhodes was executed on September 28, 2021. Less than an hour after the U.S. Supreme Court denied Rhodes' final appeal, he was taken into Texas's death chamber in Huntsville. Two of his friends were to stand witness, along with two siblings of the slain brothers, the daughter of Bradley Allen and a friend to both of the murdered men. With the 57-year-old Rhodes, strapped to the death's chamber gurney, he turned his head and looked briefly at relatives of his victims as they walked to a window in a witness area a few feet from him. Asked by the warden to make a final statement, he declined. Then as the lethal dose of the powerful sedative pentobarbital began flowing through needles in each of his arms, Rhodes took several deep breaths, gurgled twice and began snoring, each breath becoming less pronounced. Within about a minute, all movement stopped. He was pronounced dead at 6.29 p.m. Exactly 17 minutes after the lethal injection began. Rhodes was the third inmate put to death this year in Texas and the sixth in the U.S. Four more executions are scheduled for later this year in Texas, the nation's busiest capital punishment state. Thank you for watching Death Row.